Group 5A elements. Now, this group of elements are known before as nictogen. Nictogen comes from the Greek word nigen, ibig sabihin ng nigen, which is the Greek word is to choke or to stifle. Okay, again, nijen, the Greek word nijen, uh, it means to choke or to stifle. Stifle, ibig sabihin, uh, the act of suffocation. All right, and this is the property of a molecular nitrogen in the absence of oxygen. So kapag na-inhale purely yung molecular nitrogen gas, that causes a person to choke the stifle kasi nga nakakalason yung nitrogen gas. But ngayon, ang tawag na sa group 5A elements are the nitrogen family. So base ulit sa first element or first element on the list of group 5A element. So yung flag bearer is in nitrogen. So the following are the members. Aside from nitrogen, we have phosphorus, arsenic, antimony, and bismuth. Now, with regards to their oxides formed by the elements under this group, it varies depending on the property of the element. So for nitrogen and phosphorus as a non-metal, they form acidic oxides for bismuth, which is uh, on the bottom part of the group 5A elements. So this would form basic oxide, knowing that bismuth has greater metallic property. And for the uh, for the elements arsenic and antimony, they form amphoteric oxides. Now, let us proceed with the first element in the family, nitrogen. Nitrogen is also known as mephitic air. Ibig sabihin ng mephitic air, noxious. Diba? Pag noxious, nakakalason. Okay, nakakalason, mephitic air. Azote, ibig sabihin ng azote is without life, no life. Alright? Now, nitrogen, uh, it comprises about 78 to 80% of the Earth's atmosphere. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, it is considered the most abundant gas in the air. Take note high in the air or in the atmosphere. The most abundant gas among the gases present in the atmosphere of the Earth is nitrogen. Bakit siya yung uh, most abundant gas in the atmosphere? It has something to do with its stability. It is one of the most stable diatomic molecule in the atmosphere. Okay, and aside from that, Aside from it is very stable in the atmosphere, it do not involve as well to chemical reactions that might occur in the atmosphere. So it is an inert gas. Okay? It do not cause chemical reactions in the atmosphere. So uh, if we talk about abundancy of gases in the atmosphere, ang nitrogen as the most abundant, it will then be followed by the oxygen gas. Okay, so it will be followed by oxygen gas, then the argon, okay, which is the third most abundant gas in the atmosphere. So again, ha, after nitrogen, take note ha, on the Earth's atmosphere, in the air. In the air, yung abundancy, uh, nitrogen first, followed by oxygen, then we have the argon gas. Okay, uh, nitrogen is also a very important naturally occurring element that is essential for growth and reproduction in both plants and animals. Okay, and this is also found in amino acids. Okay, because amino acids that makes up the protein, the basic uh, units of um, the proteins are the amino acids. Okay, so I mean, uh, when you search of the formulas of or the structures of amino acids, they all contain nitrogen element. All right, 
Also, industrially speaking, uh, nitrates and other nitrogen-based compounds, they can be used as fertilizers. Also, um, they can also be used as the active pharmaceutical ingredient for making explosives. So take note, ang pinaka-active ingredient ng mga explosives are mga nitrates at a very high concentration. Nitrates are the main component of explosives. Now, nitrogen gases, nitrogen gas, pharmaceutically speaking, they can be used as inert atmosphere or inert gases for those pharmaceuticals that easily oxidize it. So, para masustain yung stability ng mga pharmaceutical preparations that easily oxidizes, they are usually, their bottles, their containers are usually injected with a nitrogen gas. Okay, this is an inert atmosphere to sustain the stability of that particular pharmaceutical preparation. The liquid nitrogen naman, uh, this is used as refrigerant. Okay, so meaning for cryogenic, particularly for cryogenic preservation. Okay. Uh, ibig sabihin, ginagamit siya as cooling agent for cooling agent, yung liquid nitrogen. Take note ha, for cryogenic preservation. So, ibig sabihin kasi ng cryogenic na term, yung cryogenic, it has something to do with the production or behavior ng isang material at a very low temperature. So, it is something to do with the cooling temperature. Okay, very low temp. Man. Okay, so again, refrigerant, yung pinanggagamitan ng liquid nitrogen, very essential siya for the conservation of products or of materials, usually uh, mga tissues, mga organelles, that requires very low temperature. Alright, so sabi ko kanina, nitrogen gas, uh, Pag purely na inhale, this is a uh, very uh, noxious. Okay, na suffocate. Now, once maabsorb siya sa body, okay, or systematically maabsorb siya sa body, sa katawan ng tao, uh, yung mechanism of toxicity niya is due to its oxidizing property. Okay, si so, nitrites, nitrates, um, particularly. They are said to be potent oxidizing agent. And because of that property nila, nagkakos sila ng methemoglobinemia. Alright? Ibig sabihin, uh, yung hemoglobin, uh, normally, di ba? Normally, ang hemoglobin, yung hem na part, hem. Hem na part ng hemoglobin, that, uh, that, uh, contains the ferrous, okay, ferrous form of iron, okay, the iron 2 plus. Now, once ma-oxidize niya, say for instance, with the presence of nitrates, nitrates, pag na-oxidize kasi yung ferrous, hindi na yan magiging ferrous, kundi ano ba yung oxidized form ng ferrous, di ba? It is already ferric, okay, magkaiba yung ferrous sa ferric. Okay, again, pag na-oxidize yan uh, due to nitrates, for instance, uh, that will already form ferric. And pag naging ferric na yung iron 2 plus from the heme of hemoglobin, that will already form the met hemoglobin. Okay, which is a hemoglobin that do not carry oxygen. Okay. It do not carry oxygen towards the peripheral tissues. Okay, so delikado siya. So toxic talaga yung nitrates, nitrate. Ano ba yung antidote? We can use a 1% methylene blue. Ano ba yung ginagawa ng methylene blue? Methylene blue, uh, ang ginagawa naman niya, it can accelerate the 
enzymatic reduction of methemoglobin. Ibig sabihin, from this oxidized form, ayan, from that oxidized form, kayang gawin ni met methylen blue, it reduce. Okay? It reduce yung methemoglobin via the action of an enzyme. Okay, so may mga enzyme like reductase to be specific para ma-reduce yung methemoglobin pabalik to hemoglobin. Okay, so pag may presence ng mga reductase enzyme that causes reduction kasi yung opposite ng oxidation is reduction. So we can actually reverse the um uh the reaction here or the poisoning here by the use of meth methylene blue kasi again methylene blue can accelerate the enzymatic reduction of methemoglobin with uh, uh with the age of reductase enzymes that causes reduction uh, now, let's just proceed with the compounds of nitrogen, starting with the nitrogen itself. National formulary nitrogen, particularly the nitrogen gas, yung container niya, it is usually contained in a black container or in a black cylinder. Okay, take note ha, nitrogen container niya is kulay black, carbon dioxide, gray. Okay, um... Para saan ba yung nitrogen gas? Uh, example ng uses niya is ginagamit siya as diluent or add-on gas. Add-on gas to oxygen during scuba diving. Okay? For deep sea diving purposes. Again, ginagamit as diluent or add-on gas for oxygen uh, for scuba diving or deep sea diving for purpose yung nitrogen gas. Example, in the illustration. Hindi lang yan pure um, oxygen gas that is added with diluents of gases. But the downside here or the drawback with the use of nitrogen gas as a diluent during scuba diving is it causes bends. Okay? Ang bends uh, decision which occurs when the dissolved, the dissolved, uh, mga dissolved nitrogen present in that system, pag yung mga dissolved nitrogen gas in that system will come out from a solution in a form of bubbles, ibig sabihin, pag na-absorb yan sa tao, then biglang pagdating sa blood vessel, uh, nag-bubbling effect yung nitrogen gas that could affect any body areas of the uh, person, of a person, including the joints, the lungs, the heart, the skin, the brain. So, yan yung bends. Okay? Yan yung cause ng bends. So, nitrogen, that causes bends. So, because of that, it is usually replaced with helium. Okay? Kaya meron tayong tinatawag na artificial air. So, oxygen with helium, 80 to 20 proportion. Now, liquid nitrogen naman, kakasabi kanina, this is used as refrigerant. Okay, for cryogenic preservation. Nitrous oxide naman, uh, this is also known as laughing gas. Literal na laughing gas kasi when this gas is being inhaled, uh, it causes involuntary laugh. Okay. Para saan ba yung nitrous oxide? This is an anesthetic. Okay. This is an anesthetic. And this is usually contained in a blue container. So please take note of the color of the vessels or the cylinder of each gases. Okay. Side effect? Diffusion. Hypoxia. Diffusion. Hypoxia. That is due to the rapid diffusion of nitro, uh, nitrous oxide from the blood back into the lung. So, na dilute yung mga alveolar oxygen, resulting therefore to a uh, deficiency of oxygen reaching to the tissues. Alright? Next is nitric oxide. Nitric, nitric oxide, this is an important endogenous substance. 
This is an endogenous substance produced by different cells of the body. Say, for example, ang blood vessels natin. Once ma-release yung nitric oxide in the blood vessels, that causes vasodilation. Dilation ng ating blood vessels. Okay? Now, yung uh, action ng compound na to, it is associated with the mechanism of action of the drugs, sildenafil, and nitroglycerin. Okay, almost the same yung action nila, sildenafil and nitroglycerin. Particularly with nitroglycerin, with nitroglycerin kapag na-administer siya, nitroglycerin are actually used uh, during chest pain. Kapag ang tao may chest pain, may angina pectoris, uh, that is a cardiovascular disease. Nitroglycerin, when administered, this triggers the release of nitric oxide. Kaya nagkukosyon ng vasodilation effect. Ganon din sa Viagra, yung end effect niya ultimately is vasodilation. So relative lang yung mga effect nila or mechanism of action. Okay. Uh, next, let us proceed with nitrite. Nitrite, uh, this is also a vasodilator. Uh, increase amount of nitric oxide uh, which has vasodilating uh, effect. Kasi kung titingnan mo, yung nitrite, meron din siyang NO. Pwede siyang source ng nitric oxide. So, pwede din siya as vasodilator. Uh, okay. Compound siya also for uh, cyanide poisoning to counteract cyanide poisoning. If you recall, the cyanide antidote kit, it contains a nitrite. Okay. And uh, please take note of this qualitative test, the gis elosve test. Okay. The positive result is red color. Ayan. Uh, next, the nitrite. A nitrate, all right. Nitrate, uh, example, potassium nitrate, sodium nitrate. Before they were used as meat preservative, but again, hindi na sila ginagamit ngayon as meat preservatives, kasi uh, they are said to be carcinogenic. Okay, nagperform sila ng nitrosamines in the body, which is said to be carcinogenic. Okay, then please take note also of the following qualitative test for nitrates. Okay, the most common here is the Lange test and the brown ring test. Please take note, brown ring test uh, from the name itself, the positive result is the formation of brown ring, the solution, because of the um, evolution of a gas Next, nitric oxide. Okay, so ito yung standard um, concentration of an aqueous solution, nitric acid. Okay, the nitric acid HNO3. Standard solution or standard aqueous solution of nitric acid. It contains not less than 69% and not more than 71% by weight of nitric acid. Next, let us proceed to phosphorus. Um, phosphorus, this comes from the Latin word um, phosphorus then with the letter O. Ibig sabihin, uh, this is also known as light carrier okay, or light uh, bringer of light okay, or light bringing. And the term uh, can also be related to say, Saint Elmo's fire. Diba? Saint St. Elmo. Okay? Light carrier, it is uh, It has somewhat related to St. Elmo's fire, a type of continuous uh, electric spark called glow discharge. Phosphorus, this is the 11th most abundant element in the Earth's cross. Very essential as a bone and mineral. Homeostasis, nalalam. Bone and mineral homeostasis. Um, yung relationship nila with calcium towards phosphate, it's inversely proportional. Now, when it comes to its toxicity, uh, it is said to be toxic. Particularly, there is one form of phosphorus that is really toxic. 
Okay? So, usually, um, yung fossey, ayan, yung fossey jaw that is caused or the caused by phosphorus poisoning, that results by a uh, poisonous, that is resulted by the poisonous form of phosphorus. And that poisonous form of phosphorus is the white phosphorus. Okay, again, yung phosphorus that is caused by the white phosphorus vapor. Okay, so very common is siya uh, na disease uh, to those who work with white phosphorus. So isa siyang occupational disease. It was most commonly seen in workers in the match stick industry. Okay, so syempre kung sino yung exposed to that white phosphorus vapor, uh, sila yung prone to fossy jaw. Okay, so ibig sabihin ng fossy jaw, nagkakaroon ng necrosis or uh, nade-destroy yung jaw. Okay, yung bones of the jaw. Again, very common yung siya sa mga workers in the matchstick industry caused by white phosphorus um, vapors. And there are also compounds of phosphorus, particularly the phosphate containing phosphorus. Uh, they are used as antacids, cathartics. Okay. So these are the two forms, major forms of phosphorus. We have the red phosphorus. Ang red phosphorus, this is a non-poisonous. Okay. Non-poisonous siya. Kasi flammable lang siya uh, at high temperature. Okay. So this is the form of phosphorus for match stick making. Okay. Then we have the white phosphorus naman or the yellow phosphorus. Um, ito, yung mas, ito yung toxic or poisonous form of phosphorus. Take note, red phosphorus, non-poisonous, and the white phosphorus naman is the poisonous form of phosphorus. Okay? Then we also have um, allotropes of phosphorus, meaning may mga alterations, modifications, may mga elements being added to this phosphorus, rendering it to the production of different allotropes. So say, for example, the scarlet phosphorus. Uh, this is also used in match industry. This is made upon hitting the lead bromide with mercury at 240 degrees Celsius. The violet phosphorus naman, this is uh, produced from white phosphorus with sodium, okay, heated under very high pressure. And under the temperature, 200 degrees Celsius. Then we also have the black or the metallic phosphorus, uh, white phosphorus with lead, okay, being heated at 500 to 530 degrees Celsius. So those are the allotropes of phosphorus, okay? Now for the important compounds of phosphorus, uh, I have introduced already the different phosphates. Uh, mula sa magnesium phosphate, strontium phosphate, barium phosphate, calcium phosphate. Uh, these compounds, uh, they um, exhibit anti-acid or few uh, exhibit cathartic property. Then we also have the phosphoric acid, the H3PO4. Uh, then the hypophosphorus, the H3. PO2. Okay, this is an antioxidant. Ibig sabihin, kapag antioxidant, meron siyang reducing a property. Kasi antioxidant, antioxidizing, so opposite ng oxidizing agent is the reducing agent. So this is the antioxidant being added to the following syrups, the hydroiodic acid and ferrous iodide. So that's all for um, phosphorus. Now, let us proceed to arsenic, another na heavy metal, another poisonous metal. Okay, this is also known as Lewisite metal. 
okay a metal that is uh that is a component of silver sun before arsphenamine okay silver sun arsphenamine um compound 606 there's so just the same there are a lot of names of silver sun no uh, silver sun arsphenamine compound 606 magic bullet those are the um, names, other names of the compound silver sun or arsphenamine bullet, a uh, magic bullet. Okay, so ano ba tong uh, gamot na to? Uh, before this is used, or this was a drug that was introduced as the first effective treatment for uh, the disease syphilis. So I have mentioned already syphilis device is from sexually transmitted disease caused by the bacteria. Terponema pallidium. So, ito yung first drug na introduced first effective treatment for syphilis. Okay. And please take note of the qualitative test, the gut states test. That is very, a very known uh, laboratory qualitative test for arsenic. Okay. Um, and I have mentioned earlier, arsenic is another toxic. Uh, metal. Uh, acute poisoning of arsenic causes Aldrich mislines. So, ito yung clinical manifestation na makikita natin for a person with acute poisoning of arsenic. Uh, nagkakaroon ng transverse white band or isa siyang condition which is described as white bands traversing the nail bed. Kasi nga, ang ginagawa ni arsenic affected yung keratin. It binds particularly to the sulfhydryl present in the keratin of the hair or if the nails, okay, or of the skin. Kaya yung acute poisoning niya, nails yung affected. Uh, yung chronic poisoning is already the skin. Nagkakaroon ng hyperpigmentation. Ano yung pattern ng hyperpigmentation caused by chronic poisoning of arsenic? Raindrop hyperpigmentation in the torso or extremities okay so for the compounds of arsenic mm, uh, before the compounds of arsenic uh, introduce ko muna yung mga antidotes so again ha acute poisoning chronic poisoning of arsenic we can have the following antidotes the anti-leucite metal okay the anti-leucite agent Kasi yung arsenic is the leucite metal, therefore we can use the BAL, diba? BAL, the British anti-leucite. So first line is the water-soluble analog of British anti-leucite. Uh, we have the unithiol, or this is chemically known as dimercopril propane sulfonic acid. The second line is yung plain, the British anti-leucite. And the third line agent, meaning alternative na siya, pang third choice, is the oral one. The oral succimer. Okay? Ayan. Next. Okay, let's have the compounds of arsenic. The arsenic trioxide. Trisinox, particularly. Trisinox na brand, that is, your, that is an arsenic trioxide by generic name. That was introduced before for the treatment of anti, uh, for the treatment of leukemia, isang blood disorder, okay, isang blood cancer. Take note, trisinox, it was introduced as anti-leukemic before. And in the qualitative, a uh, quanti, quantitative area, quantitative analysis area, uh, ginagamit siya to standardize this um, agent or solution, the seric sulfate during serimetry. So yung ginagamit na primary standard for seric sulfate during serimetry is the arsenic trioxide. And we also have um, compounds or mga preparations uh, of rodenticides and poisons, which also contains arsenic trioxides. And take note, arsenic trioxide, this is used in the preparation of the following, Paris Green, Fowler Solution, Donovan's Solution. Let's start with Paris, uh, with Fowler Solution. Fowler Solution, 
uh, this is chemically known as potassium arsenide solution. So, formerly used siya as anti-leukemic. The Paris green, chemically known naman siya as copper aceto arsenide. So, it is used as insecticide. Then, the Donovan solution, please take note of it components. And the most toxic form of arsenic is the R sign, the ASH3. Okay? So that's all for the uh, element group properties of arsenic. Now next, we have antimony. Antimony, this is, this comes from the Latin word stibium. Okay? Uh, just take note of the qualitative test. Okay? Qualitative analysis for antimony. In the presence of rhodamin B, it forms a violet precipitate. So that is a positive result. Okay, to detect the presence of antimony using the reagents, rhodamin B with hydrochloric acid. Okay, so for the occurrence of antimony, uh, yung natural or, or principal source of antimony is in the form of steam night. Okay, so yan yung steam night. Okay, a principal source of antimony. And with regards to uh, some compounds of antimony that are still available uh, nowadays, uh, naatay mga compounds of antimony that are used as uh, anthelmintic, ibig sabihin ng anthelmintic antiparasitic drugs siya. Yeah. It, uh, it aids towards ex, uh, uh, expels, it expels parasitic worms. Okay? So again, anthelmintic is siyang deworming agent. Ina-expel ina -expel niyo yung mga parasitic worms. Expectorant, then emetic. Emetic, it induces vomiting. Expectorant, it expels a phlegm. Okay? Okay, so again, uh, let's have the allotropes of antimony. So, we also have uh, different uh, properties of antimony. We have the metallic antimony, amorphous antimony, Ayan, metallic, amorphous, the black antimony, and the yellow antimony. So, these are the different allotropes of antimony. All right, for the compounds of antimony, let us start with the tartar emetic or the brown mixture. Uh, tartar emetic, uh, brown mixture, this is no longer used as emetic because, again, this is toxic. Okay, this is uh, already, uh, this is um, discovered, this has been discovered as a toxic compound, okay? Pag may antimony, as a heavy metal, okay? Um, before, it was used as emetic, as what the term suggests, tartar emetic, so it induces emesis, uh, and because of its property, na meron siyang emetic, property, pwede siyang uh, ginamit siya before as drug of choice for the treatment of schistosomiasis. Okay? Schistosomiasis. That is a, a condition caused by a liver fluke. Liver fluke, yan ay isang parasitic worms in the liver. Isa yung detok. Okay? Parasitic worms in the uh, liver. Schistosomiasis. So, ito yung clinical manifestation uh, usually seen among uh, victims or patients with schistosomiasis, chronic schistosomiasis. Okay, nagkakaroon ng swollen belly. Okay, antimony black and then we also have the different alloys of antimony. So, just take note of the different alloys of antimony. And the toxic form of antimony is T-bind. Okay. So, this is the Babbitt metal, the anti-friction example of an anti-friction metal. And we have this T-bind. And lastly, we have the bismuth okay, metal. Uh, bismuth metal, this is also known as beautiful meadow. Okay, beautiful middle. Pharmacological action, please take note. Among the lists of uh, the pharmaceutical uses of 
uh, bismuth containing compounds please take note of the third one uh, this is used as internal protective for peptic ulcer disease peptic ulcer disease particularly ulcer that is caused by a bacteria called a helicobacter pylori helicobacter pylori okay h pylori again uh, peptic ulcer disease caused by a bacteria a very good a compound used as internal protective is those bismuth based okay na anti ulcers Okay, so most of the compounds that will be discussed under bismuth are used as internal protective for peptic ulcer disease. And please take note of these normal side effects when a bismuth-based uh, compound is used. Nagkakaroon ng dark blue stool that is very normal and blue block gums. Pero pag naging ano na siya, severe na yung side effect niya, we can use an antidote for this heavy metal and we can use a dimer cup roll. So, so again, ha, for most of the compounds of bismuth, they are used as internal protective for the disease peptic ulcer caused by helicobacter pylori. Okay, so we'll start with pyloride. Pylori, that is a brand name. Uh, you know, generic name is bismuth citrate that contains uh, also ranitidine. As I said, bismuth citrate Pyloride also contains ranitidin. This is an this is an histamine two blocker, also good for um, inhibiting the secretion of too much acids in the stomach. Okay, so take note, pyloride um, it contains bismuth citrate ranitidin. The bismuth citrate there that is used as internal protective. Okay, the stomach. Uh, milk of bismuth, that is also an internal protective. Okay, so please take note of the components. They differ the components. Pyloride, it contains bismuth citrate and ranitidine. The milk of bismuth, it contains a bismuth subnitrate and the bismuth hydroxide. The same um, uses. Okay. Bismuth subcarbonate and bismuth subnitrate, they are very important in the preparation of milk, bismuth, okay, or the bismuth cream. And finally, the bismuth subsalicylate, okay, ito naman ay ginagamit as anti-diarrheal agent, okay, anti-diarrheal agent, Bis bismuth sub. Salicylate, particularly treatment show for travelers, diarrhea. Okay, so yung much more target niya is against Salmonella bacteria. Take note ha, bismuth subsalicylate anti diarrheal agent naman siya. So overall, the, that's all for the uh, group properties of group 5A elements or the nitrogen family. And for this slide, uh, it uh, it talks about the group 5B elements. We only have two, the vanadium and tantalum. Among the two, uh, tantalum is the more important one. Uh, this is usually used until now, recently uh, used pa rin siya for implant purposes. Okay, kasi uh, inert yung property niya. Okay. It is unaffected by body fluid. So, example, ginagamit siya during uh, orthopedic orthopedic na surgeries um, to repair large abdominal hernias or for surgical repair of bones, nerves, and tissues. So, illustration, ginagamit siya for repair of bones. Okay. So, itong part na to, particularly yung um, acetabular, component that is made up of itong part na to, that is made up of um, uh, tantalum metal. Again, pwede siya as implant uh, because it is unaffected by body fluids. So that's a good thing about uh, this uh, tantalum metal sheet. Okay.